Hi, welcome to AMSA Uter. In conjunction with Virtual AMSA Health Day, we will be uploading a series of videos related to sex education. Here is a list of our videos that will be uploaded on a weekly basis. Each video comes with a quiz and you can get a RM10 Grab Voucher as a reward of completing the quiz. Please act fast because we are only giving out 50 vouchers per quiz. Do remember to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications so you won't miss out any of our videos and quizzes. Before we proceed to the video content, we would like to express our utmost gratitude to Public Bank Berhad for sponsoring this video. So, today we will talk about STD. What is STD? Is STD serious to death? Actually, STDs mean sexually transmitted diseases. STD sounds horrible but most people do not have a clear idea on what it is. What are the consequences of getting STDs? Are STDs curable or incurable? We will let you know in this video. STDs are mostly spread through sexual intercourse. There are some well-known STDs in Malaysia, for instance, HIV, HPV, gonorrhea and chlamydia. You are at high risk of getting STDs if you have sexual contact with STD patients, multiple sex partners, or having unprotected sex. Besides having sexual contact, needle stick injury caused by the sharing of needles during intravenous shots can also lead you straight to the doors of STDs. Not only that, but STDs can also spread from mother to child during pregnancy, childbirth, or breastfeeding. STDs are serious illnesses that require treatment. In this video, we will talk about some of the curable and incurable STDs. STDs like HIV and HPV are incurable, but gonorrhea and chlamydia are curable nowadays. Now, let's start off with chlamydia. What is chlamydia? Is chlamydia life-threatening? Is chlamydia curable? Chlamydia is totally curable. Chlamydia is a common sexually transmitted disease caused by a bacteria named Chlamydia trichomatis. It can both affect men and women regardless of race and country. Pregnant women should get a test when they go to their first prenatal visit as this disease will affect their pregnancy if they are found contracted. Sexually active women at age 25 or younger should also pay a visit to your health care provider or local clinics and hospitals to get a test. Other than that, the older women who have multiple sex partners or a partner with STD, should also stay alert and get tested. So are men generally the least risk target? Of course no. Men who are sexually active and practice MSM should really start making an appointment to have a checkup after you watch this video. What are the signs and symptoms in the early stage of contraction? Even if they do have, it will appear several weeks later. Women with symptoms may notice an abnormal vaginal discharge, a burning sensation when urinating, or even bleeding between periods. For men, they will have an abnormal discharge from their penis and burning-like feeling when they urinate. Some of them might develop symptoms like pain and swelling in one or both testicles although this symptoms is quite rare. For both men and women alike, they will have rectal pain, discharge and sometimes even bleeding if the infection spreads from the genital area to the rectum. Let us dive right into the complications right now. If you are a woman and you did not notice the infection going on in your body, the infection might eventually damage your reproductive system and causes long-term pelvic pain, inability to get pregnant or a potentially deadly ectopic pregnancy. Men however rarely have health problems linked to chlamydia but they might have a chance of not having children as a complication. What are the treatment? Antibiotics are prescribed in correct dosage according to supervision and advice of medical doctor. Lastly, it is common to get repeat infection. So remember to get tested and receive treatment to ensure a healthy lifestyle. Moving on. The second disease that we are going to talk about today is gonorrhea. So, I wonder what is gonorrhea? Gonorrhea is actually an infection caused by a sexually transmitted bacterium named Neisseria gonorrhea. It can affect both females and males. In fact, it is primarily known as one of the commonly seen types of sexually transmitted disease in Malaysia. Hmm. So anyone knows what are the common places that the bacteria will infect? 
the location of infection can usually be seen in the cervix or vagina for females. As for the males, they will encounter various abnormalities in their penises. Both females and males will also encounter infection in the throat and urethra. So what are the signs and symptoms that males and females should be aware of actually? Males who contracted gonorrhea will encounter symptoms like abnormal urethral discharge. Males might also feel pain in their genitals during urination. Swelling, redness and irritation in the penis might also occur in gonorrhea-positive males. Urethral infection as well as swollen lymph nodes will also be present as a few symptoms that will arise in gonorrhea patients. How about in females? Females who contracted gonorrhea will notice that there is abnormal discharge from their urethral and vagina. Irritation can also be felt at their cervix, urethra as well as vagina. At the same time, females will also have swollen lymph nodes if they are tested positive. In some cases, both female and male patients will also encounter bloody stains on toilet papers that they used after bowel movement. Well guys, don't be shocked as this is due to the straining during rectum infection. Infection in the eye regions will also occur in some patients. They will encounter problems such as painful eyes, as well as pus formation in one or both eyes. Men and women should see a doctor when they have symptoms such as burning feel when urinating an abnormal penis or vaginal discharge. People who are sexually active especially with new partners are encouraged to get screened. The complications that may arise from untreated gonorrhea includes high susceptibility to HIV leading to AIDS, joint and limbs infection as well as infertility in women. I wonder what are the treatments for gonorrhea patients? Oral use antibiotics and even antibiotic injections will be administered to patients with gonorrhea depend on severity. Now we have finished explaining what are the curable ones, let us come to talk about the incurable ones. First and foremost is HIV. HIV, human immunodeficiency virus, is a virus that attacks cells that help the body fight infection, making a person more vulnerable to other infections and diseases. If left untreated, HIV can lead to the disease AIDS, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. So, how is the virus being transmitted? You can only get HIV by coming into direct contact with certain body fluids from a person with HIV who has a detectable viral load. These fluids are blood, semen or preseminal fluid, rectal fluids, vaginal fluids, and breast milk. For transmission to occur, the HIV virus in these fluids must get into the bloodstream of an HIV negative person through a mucous membrane which is found in the rectum, vagina, mouth, or tip of the penis, open cuts or sores, or by direct injection. So next, what are the symptoms of HIV? There are several symptoms of HIV. Not everyone will have the same symptoms. It depends on the person and what stage of the disease they are in. Below are the three stages of HIV and some of the symptoms people may experience. In stage 1, acute HIV infection. Within 2 to 4 weeks after infection with HIV, about two-thirds of people will have a flu-like illness. This is the body's natural response to HIV infection. There will be some flu-like symptoms which can last for a few days to several weeks. But some people do not have any symptoms at all during this early stage of HIV. In Stage 2, Clinical Latency People in this stage may not feel sick or have any symptoms, but they can still transmit HIV to the others. Without treatment, people can stay in this stage for 10 or 15 years, but some move through this stage faster. If you are on treatment, you can protect your health and prevent transmission to others. In Stage 3, AIDS if you have HIV and you are not on HIV treatment, eventually the virus will weaken your body's immune system and you will progress to AIDS. This is the late stage of HIV infection. Moving on, how can you know if you have HIV? You can get tested at local clinics or consider purchasing a HIV self-test kit in pharmacies or even online to reassure others and themselves on whether they contracted the disease or not. Coming to the end talking about HIV, we'll now look into the treatment. The treatment for HIV is called antiretroviral therapy ART. It involves taking a combination of HIV medicines every day. It is recommended for everyone who has HIV. However, it can't cure HIV, but help people with HIV to live longer and have healthier lives.
ART also reduces the risk of HIV transmission. Next, the other incurable STD that we are going to talk about is HPV infection. HPV is one of the most common sexually transmitted viruses. There are over 120 distinct types of human papillomaviruses but only some of them were sexually transmitted and can cause health problems like genital warts and cancer. For instance, the low-risk HPV type 6 and 11, and the high-risk HPV type 16 and 18. So what are the cause and risk factors of HPV? If you have vaginal, anal, or oral sex with an infected individual, there is a very high chance that you will get infected. Even if the infected individual has no signs and symptoms, you can get infected if you have sexual contact with the person. Also, if you have multiple sex partners or your sex partner has many other partners, you will put yourself at great risk of getting HPV as well. You can also pass the virus to your baby if you are infected and have genital warts when you're pregnant. In rare cases, this can cause a non-cancerous growth in your baby's voice box. So what are the symptoms of HPV? Most of the time, HPV infection might go away without causing any health problems but if it does, it causes genital warts and even cancer. Individuals infected by the low-risk types of HPV might develop genital warts. These warts can be transmitted through skin-to-skin -skin contact during sexual intercourse and are commonly seen at the cervix in women, and scrotum in men, but some individuals might develop warts around the anus. Meanwhile, for individuals infected by the high-risk types of HPV, the virus often causes cervical cancer or other cancers. However, these cancers associated with HPV infection often take years or decades to develop after a person was infected, and it is not guaranteed that every infected person will develop cancer. Next, we will move to the ways on how to diagnose HPV. For the infection of low-risk HPV, genital warts can usually be diagnosed when the doctors notice the lesion at the genital area. While for the infection of high-risk HPV, it can be diagnosed when the doctor found out an abnormal pap test, or after an individual undergoes a HPV test. But bear in mind, the HPV test is only recommended for women aged 30 and above. For Prevention Centers for Disease Control and Prevention CDC, recommends HPV vaccination at age 11 or 12 years, or can start at age 9 years, and for everyone through age 26 years, if not vaccinated already. Not only that, Malaysia also has a vaccination program for HPV for all female students in schools and health clinics in various districts or even states. Three compulsory shots are administered within a fixed time period. A person has to complete three shots and get tested to ensure their immunity towards the disease. Other than that, a routine pap test to screen for cervical cancer is also recommended. Here's a table to show the pap test guidelines for women at different age ranges. So before proceeding towards the end, let us look at how to prevent ourselves from contracting sexually transmitted disease. There are actually a variety of preventive measures that will help in keeping away from STDs. First and the simplest way to do is to abstain from unsafe sex, one must always put on protection such as condoms to prevent bacterial or viral transmission from one to another, and make sure the condom is not expired and not damaged. Not only that, stick to monogamous relationships, instead of having multiple sex partners to decrease the risk of getting STDs. Some STDs such as HIV might have a long incubation period, so one should always get themselves screened after involved in unsafe sex or coming into contact with fluids from an infected person's body. These fluids include vaginal fluid, pre-ejaculatory fluid or even blood. Last but not least, if one is screened and confirmed that he or she has contracted STD, they should receive treatment immediately provided that it is treatable, by adhering to the advice from their doctors or healthcare providers. Public should also get vaccinated to provide protection towards certain diseases such as HPV. STD doesn't really mean certain death but it is actually a way of the body telling you that you are in danger, so taking the correct preventive measures is vital in ensuring a healthy and happy sexual lifestyle. Thanks for watching. Please remember to try out the quiz in the description box as you've got a chance to get a RM10 grab voucher upon completion. If you think this video is helpful, please don't forget to like and share it. Make sure you hit the subscribe button below and turn on the notifications. See you in the next video.